they rate the president. But they, they rate politicians. I mean, what's the politicians rating? They have, they have to appease people. That's fine. They have, they have to appease people. But as a believer, you can't spend your time appeasing people. I knew, I knew, I knew you wouldn't believe me. That's why. That, let, me, let me just let me argue from the book since you won't believe what I say. The Bible says, but just as we had been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not as pleasing men, but God who examines our heart. They say we're not worried about trying to please God, men, because men are not going to grade the test. See, beloved, we're too busy trying to please men, but they, they are not the ones who are grading the test. It's God who is going to grade the test. So I'm more concerned about pleasing God than pleasing man. And when you get over trying to please people, you can really please God. I mean, you can do all the good in the world, somebody won't like you. You can do all the bad in the world, somebody's going to talk about you. You are in the midst of two extreme circumstances, but if you focus on pleasing God, some will like you, some will not. But if God is pleased with you, that's all that really matters. And you've got to learn how to stand for the Lord. And if God is pleased with you, it doesn't matter how folk feel about you. I wish I had some help in this room. Watch, 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 watch what he says. It's right in the text. It says, verse number five, for we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with the pretext of greed. Paul says, we didn't come to flatter you with our speech. See, we've got to get over trying to flatter people on Sunday mornings. Reverend didn't make me feel good today. Well, that was never my intent. I didn't like that sermon today. Well, it was never my intent. See, when you're faithful to the scriptures, it's not always flattering. The more I look at the word, the word is not a window, but the word is a mirror. The word helps me to see myself for who I really am. And the more I read the word, the more I'm convicted about how messed up I am. And I know I'm not the only one in here. All of you sanctified saints sitting in here with their pseudo wings and pseudo halos on with your arms folded like you're the most saved person in this room. You better get up, out, get up out of here because what I do know, all of us have problems and we are where we are by the grace of God. And the more I read the word of God, the more I'm convicted of how much I need God to work on me. Paul says we didn't come here to flatter you. We came here to share the truth of God's word. That's what we ought to do every time we are contagious for Christ. We ought to be con convinced that we need to share God's word that someone will be convicted. See, flattery only works so long. See, when you're doing that kind of stuff, you have to keep trying to figure out what the next gimmick is. It's easy for me to preach the truth and let you run me away for preaching the truth than trying to figure out the next trick to make you dance. The Bible, the Bible will keep you in any situation. I wish I had some Holy Ghost folk in this room. Notice, notice Paul, Paul says we, we, didn't come, we didn't come with flattery speech. He says, nor that we come with this pretext of greed. We didn't come to get anything from you. We came to give you something. He says, and he's going to talk about this later on in verses 7 and 8. He said, we, did, we didn't come, come trying to take anything from you. We came trying to share with you. And in order for us to be contagious, we have to be prepared to give people something that's life-changing. There are enough people showing up to town with cloths that are dipped in olive oil, Crisco oil, baby oil, and any other oil for $25. That's enough of that. People need somebody that's going to come to them with some truth. And, and we ought to be known as truth bearers. We ought to be bringing the truth, not to flatter somebody, not to appease somebody, not to impress somebody, but to give someone a life-changing word. So he says, he says we, we, nor did we seek glory, verse 6, nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others. He says, we, we didn't come to get glory from you. We, we want to give God glory. He says, now, though we didn't come, with the pretext of greed, simply suggesting, we didn't come asking for you, asking you for anything. But he says, if we wanted to, we could have exercised our apostolic authority 
And we could have requested from you whatever we desired. But we chose not to because we didn't want you to get the wrong perception of us. So we wanted you to understand we were coming giving you something rather than trying to take something from you. So if we're going to be contagious Christians, we have to be faithful. We have to understand this, that we must be conscious carriers. We have been entrusted with the gospel. Every believer sitting in a pew in this room right now, you've been entrusted with the gospel. That means you are a steward of God's story. And, and the question is, how faithful have you been with the story that God has given you? How faithful have you been sharing the story? You ought not wait until Resurrection Sunday to share your story. You all not wait until Christmas time to share your story. We must tell about his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Every chance we get, we must always be about sharing the message of Christ. How many of us truly are willing to suffer? You have to be willing to suffer to be a faithful steward. Then you have to also understand you have to not only be willing to suffer, but you also have to refuse to compromise the message. If you compromise now, you'll always be compromising. But if you stand on the truth you can stand on it all the time 